everyone, uh, my name is Finn. Uh, I'm the designer maker behind Ashcroft Makers, based here in the northeast of Scotland, where I make 3D printed circular sock machines. I'm very happy to be taking part in the virtual crank in this weekend, hosted by Amy and Jim Grant from Good Karma Farm. Um, I'll be showing you how the machine operates and probably a demo or two. Um, I'm also a crank in sponsor. Uh, donating a gift certificate and some Ashcroft yarn. So we'll see you on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. This is uh, Finn uh, MacArthur from Ashcroft Makers in the Highlands of Scotland. I think I've said that correctly. Uh, Finn, you are on. Is that better? Hi. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, shall I start rolling? <laughs> uh, my name is Finn. Uh, I'm the maker designer behind Ashcroft Makers here in the northeast of Scotland. Um, and I make 3D printed circular sock machines. Um, we've only been in business for about seven months. Um, the machines are made of PLA plus filament. Um, we had started the business in the middle of February um, and unfortunately we didn't know there was going to be a pandemic so we had a few supply issues um, with filament. We were originally just going to have the white colour um, as you would have in knitting machines and sewing machines. Um, so we ended up with a few different colours just because we had a supply problem with the filament. Um, the filament is made out of cornstarch, it's biodegradable, um, it's non-toxic and um, it does have a softening point of about 60-65 degrees Celsius which is 140 Fahrenheit. Um, so we don't recommend that you leave it in a hot car because I will show you what happens when you do leave it in a hot car. Um, we tested this one, we actually turned the oven on and baked this in the oven to see what would happen and it will actually um, melt the plastic. So I don't recommend you do that. If you're going to be traveling with this, it's also portable and lightweight. Um, if you are going to take it up to the cottage or go away on holiday or something, then we recommend you use a um, cooler bag of some kind. All the fixings are stainless steel. Um, the cylinder, uh, actually the whole machine takes about five days to print um, and we can remanufacture any part of the machine. So um, sometimes all the prints don't work out. If anybody's familiar with 3D printing, um, any draft in the room, for example, um, will warp um, the print. So there is some waste and we just have to keep an eye on the machines and make sure that um, uh, they're all behaving. <laughs> um, each piece is hand polished, it's finished uh, by hand. Each machine is tested before it leaves the studio. And uh, so we have a variety of colors um, now because obviously we had a supply um, issue. Um, the machine knits in a clockwise, and counterclockwise direction. Uh, there's one feeder, it clamps to the table. So you now, um, we've we modified the design a little bit. So rather than clamping it to the table um, at the side, it now clamps underneath and you can have actually three clamps on there. So it's quite sturdy. Um, you can make, as you can see behind me, I've made a few samples. I didn't have a lot of time um, to get this ready. Um, this is a toe up sock that was knit on the machine. So we can do heels and toes. Um, a, a lot, the, the question I get asked a lot is, you know, can you do heels and toes? And that, yes, you can. So. Um, there's a few socks there that I've made to show you. You can do hats, scarves, mittens, gloves, uh, leg warmers, all that kind of thing. Most, most things, you can get most things that you can do on, a, um, on the other sock machines. Um, 
Okay, it's operated by two V cams. I don't know if you want to put the, the camera down. So you've got two V cams, one on each side and an uplift cam in the center. So the first V cam controls the downstroke of each needle, followed by an upward movement towards the uplift cam. And that uplift movement allows the old loop to slide down the needle below the latch, causing the latch to open. And then the yarn enters the needle under the hook and forms the new loop. So then the second cam on the other side, uh, the downstroke is responsible for clearing the old stitch and the new loop gets drawn through the old loop from the previous row and then the latch closes, releasing the old loop. And uh, the new loop remains on the needle and round you go. Um, there's two um, settings on each side to adjust the, the cams and also um, a tension regulator on the yarn. So if you wanted to change the knit to a tighter knit, you would either change the setting on the regulator or you can actually move cams, um, raising or lower, lowering them to either lengthen and loosen the stitch or shorten and tighten the stitch. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Um, Again, uh, it's mechanically, it's very simple. Um, anybody who has used a mesh machine um, will obviously then have to learn to use the cams differently because the cylinder rotates on this model and not the feeder. So the feeder is stationary. And uh, that is pretty well it. As I said, it's very simple, very easy to use. The hardest thing is adjusting the cams. The machine does get preset during um, testing. So, um, and you can mark the outside of the casing, um, depending on what size cylinder that you have in the machine. Um, we, the cylinders, the, the cylinders are, uh, we have 48 size, 60 and 72. And I've made some samples here. You can knit the 48, with a DK weight yarn. And so that is a regular cam setting. And then if you lower the cams, you can see the difference in the width of the sock. So um, if you wanted to do, use a DK weight um, in a larger sock, all you do is lower the cams and that's how that knits. Uh, this is a regular knit. This is a merino nylon. So that's uh, made on a 48 slot cylinder in a DK weight yarn. Um, the 60 slot, again, depending on what yarn you're using, you will end up with a different width sock. So that's a Merino Sport, which is the widest. That's a four inch width. And then you've got a warm nylon, which is three and three quarters. So it's a little bit narrower. And then uh, we've got a Corridor high twist sock, which is about the same. So what I recommend um, when you buy the machine is just experimenting to start before you go in and knit a sock and see which one is suitable for you. Um, otherwise you will end up with the wrong size sock. And so a lot of it depends on what yarn you're using. And um, that's it for the um, uh, for all the yarn. So, would you like me to show you how to cast on? You can cast on with a basket. Uh, these come with the machine. Uh, there's a hook on the bottom um, which we can um, attach the weight to, and you can also put a weight on the inside if you need to. Sometimes, if you're using a heavier yarn or um, Oh, especially with the 72 cylinder, you might need um, a heavier weight. So this um, allows you to do that. Or you can use a sock bonnet and do the same thing with a sock bonnet and a buckle. And the machine comes with uh, claw weights, well not claw weights, um, heel forks, three heel forks, uh, three clamps, you'll get a buckle and all the attachments and um, that is pretty well it. So if I cast on, shall I, with a, um, 
with yeah, everyone else? I want to see. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you want to put the camera over the... Um... And grab the Let's just turn this around. Hey, can everybody see? Yep. Looks good. Yep. So I'm using a, a merino sock yarn to cast on. Um, and with the sock bonnet, you just have to um, draw out about a double arm's length of yarn and place the basket in the center. And you want to loop around every other needle, but every hook on the basket. And just continue around. <clears throat> And you go three quarters of the way round and hang your weight. And you must make sure that the first loop is under the hook of the basket. Otherwise, your stitches will just unravel. I've missed the first stitch. I'm afraid the cast on was a bit lopsided, but you get the uh, the gist of that. So then you would just change to your project yarn and um, carry on knitting. So what I'll do is I'll just cut that, remove the basket, and I'll do a cast on with um, a sock on it.
Am I still on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm asking <laughs> one of the questions. <laughs> And attach the buckle. You've got any missed stitches, you just do the same thing that you would do on any other sock machine. Just pick them up. There's another one. And then to change to your project yarn, um, just cut your waist yarn, re-thread your project yarn. The buckle and um, would you like to see me um, net a heel? I think, yeah, you've still your is own. that okay? Yeah. Um, some sure. of the comments were when we um, first um, launched the product was that it only knit tubes. So if I show everyone how I knit a heel, <laughs> and hopefully. That'll answer some questions. Right. We so, have a, just so you know, Finn, we have a bunch of questions. Do you want to answer some questions first and then do the hit? Yeah, sure. That's not a problem. Okay. All right. Let me see what we got here. Um, uh, hang on here. Okay. Let's see. Um, is there a suggested marker for writing on your CSM? What do you recommend for people to, to mark their CSMs? Well, I use, um, when I'm marking the cylinders here, I use um, just a, a colored marker. And to mark the side of the cylinder, um, you can just use any biro, because obviously this is plastic. And um, that works fine. And then if you need, you can actually rub the marks out and place them somewhere else. Well, that's handy. Um, somebody's asking, um, what kind of 3D printer are you using and are the STL or OBJ files available for sale to a person that has their own printer? Um, we use, um, Creality printers. Um, we don't currently sell the files for the machine. We do get asked this a lot, um, and unfortunately, we're not selling them at the moment. Whether we do in the future or not, uh, we're not sure about. So um, that's um, unfortunately um, the only answer I can give at the moment. <laughs> um, somebody asked, "What can't what can what can't you knit on your machine versus a standard CSM? Is there anything you can't?" Well, uh, well, I think you can knit most things. Um, I, as I say, I only started this project um, seven months ago. So I've actually have to fess up here because before I started this project, I never knit a pair of socks in my life. <laughs> so I've had to learn <laughs> the process along with everybody else. As far as I'm aware, you can knit most things. You can knit in the flat as well. Um, 
this is a flat piece of knitting um, that I, I knit a couple of nights ago. And this is just a half cylinder size. So I think you can do a full cylinder size. I haven't done that yet. You can do pico hems, regular hems, socks, heels, toes. You can hang a toe. Um, you can knit hats, uh, headbands, and then, you know, the, the leg warmers, mittens. I haven't tried a pair of mittens yet. Um, so I would say you can knit most things. Okay, go ahead, Jill. Oh, I forgot my question. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, is, as a biodegradable plastic, what life, how much of a life estimate does it have? And is there a warranty? There is a three month warranty. Um, which covers any defects. Um, so if anything breaks in the first three months, you can just contact us and uh, take a photo, send it back to us and we'll re replace it for you. That's not a problem. Um, as I say, um, the plastic is very durable. We haven't had um, any problems with it at all. It should last as long as a metal machine, as long as you take care of it. Um, you will have to clean the machine like you would with any regular sock machine. Um, we don't recommend using um, oil on the machine. We recommend using a spray, um, which is a anti-friction dry PTFE lubricant. And it um, sprays on wet and then you let it dry. So the good thing about the spray is that you could actually spray the cylinder slots as well, uh, as well as the track bed and the cams. Um, what kind of needles does it take? We use 12 gauge, um, yeah, standard 12 gauge flatbed knitting, uh, yeah, knitting machine needles. Are they uh, gear hard or automatic? Sorry? Are they gear heart needles or auto needles? No, they're needles? not. This is this is the okay. um, this is the needle here. So we've modified these. Okay. Um, we are in the process of redesigning the cylinder um, to make the needles more accessible. Then people can just buy the needles. So we may end up buying gear heart needles or somebody else's needles, and then we can modify the cylinder to knit with that specific needle. But at the moment, we're using. Um, the 12 gauge. Uh, so, yeah. um, are you planning to develop a river? Yes, we have designed a river and that will be launched in January. Well, that's exciting. Um, and then, uh, what somebody wants to know how much they cost. What is the cost? Um, the present cost is 345 pounds. Um, shipping obviously is extra. Um, if you're shipping to the U.S., um, the Royal Mail has increased their prices just recently by about 30%. Wow. Um, so you'd have to take that in, into consideration and then any uh, import duties would be extra as well. Okay. Um, all right. So I think that's, I think I got everybody's questions asked. So if you want to go ahead and knit your heel. Um, I do a heel? When, when you're all done, do you have some things that you're going to give away, I believe? So we'll get to that. Don't let me forget. We'll do that at the end, if that's OK. OK. Yeah, yep. that's fine. OK. OK. Oh. So if I move the cylinder around. The easiest way to understand how this machine works is by just drawing a line. So this is the side you really don't want to touch when it's knitting. And this, and that should, you know, um, how many manipulating the yarn. Uh, and this is the side that you make all the changes on because obviously your cams are at the top end. So um, you would knit a quarter of a row, I've marked the cylinder halfway points, knit a quarter of a row, and then you would just lift your needles And then you knit the other quarter until the needles are facing you. And for the first row on this uh, particular pattern, I do a wrap row. 
So you're going to wrap the first needle that's been taken out of work and just come around the other way. And do the same with this row, wrap the first needle. And then the row three, you're going to lift If you miss a stitch, then just nip that off. That missed. Oh, actually, it did get it. Um, and then you're going to lift this needle on the other side. And then you can add wrap rows in if you'd like. If you need a bigger, if you're hanging your toe, for example, you may want to add in more wrap rows to make the knitting stretch to the other side and then you just carry on and then this side and I'm going to hang some heel weights And so you always lift the needle on the side of the working yarn. And then lift this side. And around you go. So would you like to see the increase? Yes. How's that? Okay, so when you decided how many needles you actually want to knit, some do, some people leave eight, some people leave 10. So we can just pretend that they're all done. Um, so when you're going back, when you're lowering the needle, you need to make sure that the working yarn is above the latch and the yarn on the needle is below the latch because it actually knits twice. So that needle has just caught the working yarn on the return and then it's going to knit again when you move the cylinder around. So then the same on the other side, if you lower this needle, make sure the yarn's above the latch. There's the needle. And around you go until you're finished. 
And I've just raised that instead of lowered it. There we go. And so on until you get back to the beginning. So um, it does take longer to knit a heel with this machine. Um, so the user would have to decide, you know, is it actually worth spending that amount of time knitting heels? I, I don't know. It's really down to the user at that point. But you can knit a heel. It does take a bit longer. As you can see, I'm a little out of practice. Um, and then you would do the same for the toe. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Finn. Oh, good. Okay. I'm ready for you. That's good. Okay. Do you, are you going to, do you have a, am I correct that you have a camera or something in your, in your room where you make these or? No, we don't. Okay. Um, each, each printer, um, because they extrude um, the, uh, the filament at 210 degrees Celsius which is 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so each machine actually is like a space heater. So in the middle of summer, with all these space heaters, it gets very, very hot. So the room is air conditioned and you can't have any windows open. And um, what we actually really need is an airlock, uh, which we don't have at the moment. So I tend not to go in there unless I absolutely have to. And then you're opening the door and closing the door directly um, afterwards. And you can't actually have a, a door or window open onto the hallway of the print room. So because you just warp the, um, the warp, warp the prints. How, how long does it take for you to print one of these? Um, to print the whole machine takes a week, takes over five days. Wow. Wow. Um, and somebody asked earlier, and I forgot to ask this, what made you think to do this? Like what, what prompted this? Well, it, it actually started out, um, um, it almost started out as a joke. We were actually at the Loch Ness uh, Knit Fest last, uh, in 2019, just about a year ago. And anybody who's been to the Loch Ness Knit Fest in 2019 will know how quiet it was. And um, so we were sitting there and then I was just brainstorming and I said, um, do you think we could uh, think about making, at that point I called it a circular knitting machine. I didn't actually call it a sock machine. And um, then the, uh, we went home and thought about it and did a bit of uh, research and uh, came up with this machine. And the viewer wants to see the mask. Do, do, were you already, you, you were already printing things with your printers at that point? This was just uh, the next... Thing. Nothing, nothing like this. We were okay. printing like teapot, you know, anything that broke in the house. The wonderful thing about 3D printing is that you can use it for anything. Um, you know, door handles, um, car, bits of, you know, anything for the car around the house. Um, right. You are restricted by the size of your print bed. So each printer, um, obviously they come in different sizes. So you would have to decide what you're going to print and how you're going to print it um, on that size print bed. Okay. If so, that makes sense. And is your, are your backgrounds, I mean, uh, how, are you engineers or like, how did you kind of get started in, in 3D printing <laughs> in the first place? Um, well, my background um, is in finance. I worked in Toronto, Canada for many, 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 many years. And I moved back after 9-11 to the UK. And uh, my husband is an engineer and I'm a knitter. So we put our heads together and um, came up with a sock machine. 
<laughs> is there a machine that you base this one off of? Not really, no. Um, obviously, we had to measure, we had to use the uh, dimensions um, to make a sock. So you're the, the, the pitch of the needles, so the cylinder, the size of the cylinder is dictated by the pitch of the needles in order to make a sock. So that was our starting point. And then um, we had to decide how um, you would, you know, be able to use it. Obviously, you can see hands-free. Um, you don't want to be holding the yarn unless you have to. And then, you know, we, we had to come up with a way to um, clamp it to the desk. That seemed the most um, easiest way to do it because it's so light. Mm -hmm. The whole machine only weighs um, probably uh, just over two kilos, which is about four pounds. And that's with all the attachments. Wow. Okay. Are you, have you thought about making a take up spring to make uh, heels easier? Yeah, as we, um, you know, the more I get into it, obviously, um, design time um, is, um, you know, the, the amount of time as we, because we, we've also got, you know, orders uh, to fulfill. So we'll have to, um, there are things that we, we are looking into. It's the same, we're going to be modifying the cylinders to use with different needles. Um, we're going to be, um, launching the river in January and then we may end up changing the tension mast. Um, um, somebody, he's doing it. Oh, okay. You sure? Well, they're asking to see the weights and stuff underneath. Oh, okay. Yeah. So somebody asked, do you know approximately what the shipping to the U S is now that it's <laughs> now? Since it, well, we, we had an issue with um, shipping when we first started shipping them out. Um, all of a sudden, um, it seemed like all the parcels disappeared. And I, I think I spent more time answering emails and um, looking at um, shipping um, tracking numbers. And what we've suddenly realized with the pandemic hitting uh, the US, um, parcels were just being um, put into warehouses and left. Um, it's not so bad now. Uh, the East Coast, I believe is pretty much up to date. Um, LA is the worst at the moment. Their gateway, um, they're pr currently getting about 50% more um, mail through that gateway than they would at Christmas time. Wow. So you can imagine the amount of um, deliveries that are going out. What I tried to do was try to get, I send everything track and signed. Um, and I tried to get the cheapest deal I possibly could for a tracked and signed shipping. And that was through the Royal Mail. Um, I have contacted um, the courier companies. Um, but I think when the last time I got a quote from them, um, the shipping cost would actually triple. At the moment, the shipping cost is um, just over £60. Oh. But depending where you are in the US you i'm I, what i've been saying is that you will have to wait you know eight to 12 weeks is not uncommon yeah somebody just said in the t in the chat that their her sat in customs for six weeks yeah so, yeah yeah um. yep. so I'll, all i can do is apologize because obviously i have no control over that um and just to say we do we you know if anybody has um, a query about shipping they can get in touch with me and I'll, I'll see what i can do right um uh and apart from that i think different countries are uh, i think canada may be a little bit different um i think their shipping is um they actually tell you where the parcel is because sometimes um usps don't always tell you where the parcel is which makes it harder but if you know the shipping's in customs, then okay, you know, the parcel's in customs, then you're like, okay, I'll just wait until it's, you know, ready kind of thing. But we, yeah. that's why we took US and Canada off our shop updates. We do shop updates about once a month um, where that allows anybody on the wait list to purchase a machine online. Um, but I didn't put US and Canada on there only because um, customers weren't reading the notice on the banner about the shipping and it was causing all kinds of problems. So I apologize that they're not included in the shop updates, 
hopefully next year things will get better. We don't know really what's happening. Um, to say when the shipping um, gets back to normal, then obviously we'll put people back on, we'll put US Canada back on the shop updates because that does allow anybody on the wait list to then buy a machine online. Um, well, I had somebody a couple of weeks ago who was the last person on the wait list for 2020 and she managed to get a machine. So, um, okay, great. That's good. Um, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble seeing the computer. Hold on. Okay, we'll switch. switch seats here. <laughs> um, hang on here a second. Then. Um, somebody asked, do you make anything larger, any larger sizes of machine? I'm not sure. Yes. Um, again, the, the, the great thing about 3D printing is that you don't have to retool because you've got your printers. <laughs> so the only thing you have to do is then redesign the pieces. So we have had an idea of hat machines and sweater machines. Oh. Um, you actually purchased a larger printer because obviously you're restricted by the size of the print bed. So a sweat machine, for example, um, could be print on the larger size print printer. But um, as I say, we'll, we'll get into, that'll be 2021 um, before we have a look at those two. We want to get the river out first and then we will maybe um, get a few more um, circular machines on the market. Um, somebody has asked a couple of times to see the yarn mast and topper and the knitting underneath, like underneath. Yep. Um, the yarn mast is, I think we showed it before anyway. So the, the, this is the yarn feeder. We've got a slit in the yarn feeder. Um, whoops. Oh, have I gone off? No, you're good. No, you're good. We can no, hear I'm you. still there. Yeah. Can't see. It's all good. Okay, um, there's a slit at the top of the yarn feeder. So if you're knitting and make a mistake, you can just obviously take the yarn out without cutting it. And also in the end of the, uh, we call it a pigtail, um, you've got a slit there where you can take the yarn out um, and obviously it just comes out of the tension um, unit regulator in the middle. And um, so say it's, it's just a really simple design. Did you want to see the knit underneath? That's the, that's the buckle with the weight. That's actually the um, cast on bonnet attached to the knitting at the top. Um, these are the knits. So as I say, that's um, that's a superwash wool that is 100% Corridale. This is a nylon wool. And I followed the same pattern for each piece. So you can see how different yarns will actually change the size of your sock. That's a Merino 2575. So all those three are knit with the same pattern. Okay, I think we've got, unless people, anybody has more questions, I think uh, if I didn't ask your question, ask, ask it again. Oh, wait, here we go. You know, somebody said, thank you. Um, any plans for smaller machines? Somebody wanted to know. Oh, we haven't thought of a smaller machine. Um, we may try that. <laughs> we'll have to see how small a machine would you like? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they have in mind. Let me see if I can find the person. It was Rosalind Keys. Roz wanted to know any plans for smaller machines. Roz, Roz do you want to ask? Kid socks, she says. Oh, kid socks. Yeah. Um, we, that's something else we'll have to add to the list. As I say, um, it does take time to um, get these, um, you know, uh, designed and tested. So um, that might be something that we'll add to the list. Cool. Uh, let's see, does it have a row counter? No, it doesn't, but you can use, there are row counters that, um, what are they called? Bail counter. You, you attach a magnet. You can attach a magnet to either the cylinder or the gear. 
and then um, it's a digital row counter and then that will tell you how many rows you're knitting. Um, somebody asked this earlier and I forgot to ask. When, when you cast it, it says when, when they cast it on, they went counterclockwise, then clockwise. So can it knit in both directions? It yeah. can knit in both directions, yes. Okay. I'm right-handed. So I knit in a clockwise direction. And then when I'm knitting, maybe it looks backwards because of the camera. I don't know. Um, yeah, I knit in a clockwise direction, even though I'm right-handed, but I use my left hand to operate the, um, the gear. Um, because then I'm standing at the side. So if I'm knitting clockwise, I can see where my yarn placement is before um, I drop a stitch, basically. If my yarn's not in the correct position. And then when I'm doing socks, I will actually alternate sides. And then I think you can see me moving the yarn above and below the latch. We lost you on the video. Oh, am I back? Yeah. There you are, there you go. Okay, yeah, the battery's getting flat. Okay. Um, yeah, so I switch sides, but I use my left hand to crank. Okay, <laughs> so I think uh, in the interest of time, we probably, uh, if you have some giveaways, uh, if you want to say what they are, and then I will, okay. I will draw the name. We have a random, what is it called? Random name generator? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, fire away. Uh, okay, Ashcroft uh, is donating today a hundred pound gift certificate towards a circular sock machine. And also you won't have to wait. You will be slotted in to the uh, current production. So no worries about waiting for the machine. We'll just, all you need to do is pick the color and the size cylinder that you'd like. And we will donate a hundred pounds towards the cost of the machine. Nice. Really generous. So the, the winner is uh, Jim Grant. Jim <laughs> Grant. <laughs> um, the winner is um, my print. The print's small. Lisa Beer, and she lives in. Um, hold on. Is Lisa Beer on on the in the meeting right now? If you are, unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Lisa. I'm so excited! Oh my god, thank you! <laughs> oh, congratulations! Where, where do you live, Lisa? I'm in the UK, I'm in Devon! Oh, yes! Wow! <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Lisa! <laughs> cool! Oh, wow! Thank you so much! Congratulations, Lisa! So, thank we'll be you. in touch! Oh, wow! Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> Hey, Lisa, did my sock? No, they didn't get there yet. Never mind. Yeah, we're sock buddies! <laughs> yes, we're sock buddies! <laughs> oh, that's such a small world, isn't it? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Congratulations, you. Lisa. Thank you. And, and great job, Finn. Um, it's really you very nice much. To that. And what else were we doing? Are we good? Uh, another giveaway. Should I oh, good. Another Yay. Giveaway? All right. That was the last one was exciting. Go ahead. <laughs> um, another giveaway. Um, because I was going to knit um, uh, socks, um, I had this idea of dyeing some yarn, but I haven't been in the dye studio um, that much lately. But um, we do produce also Ashcroft yarns. Mm -hmm. And so the second giveaway today is a sweater's worth of Ashcroft yarns. And then oh, you can wow. just go online and pick your color. Wow, amazing. And we okay. will send it out to you. So the winner of, the, of that is going to be um, Laura Pollock. Lara, Lara Pollock? Uh, are you on here right now, Laura? Uh, Laura. I'm mute and speak up. If you are, you live, you, oh, you probably know where you live, but according to this, <laughs> you live in Georgetown, Ontario, Canada. Oh, wow. Congratulations, Oh, she's Laura. here. She's chatting. I see her. Laura, <laughs> unmute. Unmute so we can, we can hear your voice. There we go. <laughs> there, <it is. laughs> there we go. So I live in Georgetown, uh, Ontario, in Canada, and that's where the Legare machines are, were manufactured. Oh, oh. Wow. how fun. How fun. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. That's Thank very you exciting. so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Finn. That was so interesting, and, uh, and thanks for your... Um, for your, your giveaways and that it's just okay. fantastic. My and pleasure, thank you very much getting... for having me. Oh. Hopefully your waiting list is gonna get even longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right.